it's been another week of the NFL, and that means there is more fantasy football stuff to discuss. So let's go ahead and jump right on in with the Andy Dalton Fan Club, which is my league with my IRL friends and family, and discuss what happened. So, first and foremost, I lost this week. I was up against my brother James. It did not go well. We did lose. Um, but before we talk about what happened, we need to talk about some roster changes that took place. We have acquired one James Cook from um, Skip. Um, we also acquired Matthew Stafford as part of that trade, but we then released him for Sam Darnold. Um, and we we gave away uh, Najee Harris, Pierce, and Lazard, maybe? I can't remember who. Two of our uh, backup wide receivers that we weren't really getting anything out of. Um, Najee Harris. Oh, no, sorry. It was Stroud. Harris and Pierce that we gave away. Um, we had a complete clean out at quarterback. We um and we we went and got a, a a running back who had been scoring incredibly well. Um, and that left us with an extra spot on our roster, which we used to pick up Geno Smith, and then we cut Stafford for Sam Darnold. Um, so that was what that was that was the plans going in. I felt good about it, but unfortunately, then plans resulted in a big fat nothing um as we got battered uh james scored an incredible 135 we got knocked the fuck out at 86 so let, let's look at what went wrong here Geno smith 29 points absolute hero very happy i picked him up looking forward to seeing more of that from him hopefully um josh jacobs slow week 10 points is okay um, if other people show up, unfortunately, people didn't show up. No score, n underutilized. They they went down early against Minnesota, which meant they had to kind of throw their way back into the game, which always hurts running backs. Uh, Buffalo on Monday Night Football, again, James Cook, not a lot of usage. They were getting blown out. They were trying to throw the ball. That limits the running backs' usage. Chris Godwin... He got a decent amount of targets, didn't get in the end zone. 70 yards, not ideal, not great. Especially in a non-PPR league. Uh, if you don't score, it hurts. Um, and once they were up a decent way, they were just trying to run the clock out, which meant they were throwing the ball less, ironically. <coughs> um, Harrison got the first touchdown, was off to a really hot start. Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't play after the first quarter. Um, the three weeks since week one where he's like scored a better amount of points after the first quarter that's basically what he finishes on um, and they got blown out in that game so like that's the kind of game where you'd hope that maybe he'd get a garbage time score and find his way up to 20 points but just didn't happen mike gasicki actively costing me points with negative point seven which is just mint um Bijan robinson once again completely underutilized um falcons were trying to fight back late to win that game against new orleans um which meant they were just throwing the ball they didn't use Bijan at all really really frustrating um managed to get near around 10 points which wasn't enough claim fair ben with three pats and a field goal in the win over jacksonville six points isn't too bad but we can do better packers defense after a great week last week um were costing me points for most of that loss to minnesota they were really struggling but the defense definitely led the way back in that fight back loss um and that got them to being a non drain on society again um but we didn't really leave anything on the bench here um sam donald would have been a downgrade over geno smith jk dobbins would have been an extra three points over james cook um, and then Xavier Worthy could have come in for Godwin for an extra 10 points. So we're leaving, what, 13 points? Oh, and four at tight end. So 17 points left on the bench. Wouldn't have changed anything. I'd have broken 100. Would have been slightly less embarrassing. But it wouldn't have changed anything. Um, just poor, 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 poor all round. Um, so we've got some things in. We've got some waiver requests in. Hopefully some of them land and we can steady the ship going forward because it's been um, a less than ideal start. On James's side, everyone balled out other than the Dunes. Uh, Joe Burrow, 24. Aaron Jones, 20. 
Brian Robinson, 25. Amon Ra, 15. Romeo Dunn's only one point. Um, Dalton Kincaid, 5. Juan Jennings, 9 points. Evan McPherson, 14 points. The Browns' defence, 20 points. And he still left points on his bench. He could have had another 8 points from Jared Goff. He could have had another 3 points with Ford at um, Flex. But it is what it is. Um, can't dwell on it, just got to move on. I'm still happy with the trades we made, even though they weren't enough to flip the tide this week, because I think over the course of the season, they're going to pay dividends. So yeah, let's move on to the next game. Next up, we have the league leader, Pash, who is now 4-0, taking on Anchor, um, and it's another L for Anchor, which is crazy, because Anchor is very, very good at fantasy football. Um, she's getting a little bit unlucky here, you can't help but feel. Um, and there's actually a coaching tab um, that says like who the best coach is, i.e. who's the best at playing their optimum lineup, and she is ranked number one in like the fewest points left on the bench consistently, um, which just goes to show that her players are just underperforming. But let's have a little look here. Pash, 25 points out of Dak, 15 out of Saquon, 30 out of Mason in that 49ers bounce-back win. Um, there are nine points from Metcalf, 10 points from Pickens, four points at tight end, 12 points at flex, five at kicker, 15 at defense. Really solid all the way around. This is what we talk about. We say 10 points and nine points don't break your back as long as everyone else does that. If, if, if everyone is doing nine points, it's not enough, but you can get away with a couple of nine and tens if you've got your quarterback putting up 20, one of your skill positions doing 30, and your flex also matching that kind of 10 to 12 range. Um, Not really any points left on the bench. Jane Daniels left on the bench for 30 points, so he could have scored an extra six. But other than that, pretty, um, pretty tidy performance. I can't imagine he's unhappy with how that's come out. Um, over on anchor, let's have a look at Warren Wrong. Josh Allen, massive, massive stinker against Baltimore. Only eight points. You really hate to see it. Brees Hall had to play in one of the worst games of football I've ever watched in that Jets-Denver game. Um, 18 total yards is diabolical, um, and that's really, really hurt anchor. Jameer Gibbs, good game, 23 points. Stefan Diggs, 14 points, absolutely fine. Alave, 10 points, that's fine. Bowers, 3 points, fine. Um, Allen... Um, the other running back in the Jets game. Going for two Jets running backs is a, an interesting decision. I'm not sure if I can back that. Kicker did okay, defense did okay. But if you look here, the big difference makers, your quarterback underperforming massively, and then you're, you're flexing your running back, not hitting 10 points. But at 13 points on there, six there, four there, that's... 23 points. 23 points onto that. She's on 110. All of a sudden, like you're like, oh, that was close. So this is what we talk about when we say tens don't kill you. It's fours that kill you. Um, any points left on the bench? Um, ironically, yes. Only just, though. Derek Carl, 13 points, would have been a six-point upgrade over Josh Allen. Um, and Sam Laporta with 5.9 would have been an upgrade over Brock Bowers. Um, do I think either of them are insane decisions? No. Um, Bowers has had a very, very good start to life, but they, uh, Vegas are underperforming, so a bit difficult to tell. I'm also pretty sure Laporte went into the game with a questionable, so that might have just been a case of who am I more confident is actually going to play, uh, with Detroit, of course, only playing last night. Um, but... It is what it is, but maybe she needs to have a look at her squad here. Zero. 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 1.7. There's nothing on her bench for her to really use. I mean, even if she could just add her bench with no subs needed, <laughs> she's only breaking 100, barely. Um, so it's not it's not looking great. And maybe that's why she's so high on the coaching board. Her bench is so piss poor, it doesn't matter. Next up, we have me father versus Ryan. Ryan is on four, and dad is now moving to two and two with another win here. 150 to 68.93. Oh, good gravy. 
Now, it is worth pointing out Ryan had three players register goose eggs. And the Bills defense actively cost him points. But that's still a very, very poor score. Um, so, Jordan Love, 35 points, desperately fighting back against Minnesota and not doing enough. Uh, if he hadn't thrown them three interceptions, he'd have hit 40 points as well, which is crazy. James Connor in twen with 24 points in that uh, loss to Washington. A-Chan really struggled about two or six points. Garrett Wilson, only one point. Eight in that um, loss to Denver. Nothing for Nakua, Andrews, or Smith. Hopkins was six points um, in Cleveland's loss to the Raiders. And then the Bills defense costing two points. Not great. Lots of points left on the bench as well. Oh, baby. Um, but then over on Dad's side, my goodness. <coughs> Lamar Jackson with 25 points. Um, Montgomery with 17, Pollard with 22, CD Lamb with 22, Brian Thomas with 17, Dallas got up 7, Singletree with 7, Moody with 11, and the Buccaneers defense with 19. And this is what happens when you kind of go, everyone do your job and hope one or two people pop off. You're going to have weeks where basically all people pop off 17, 17, 22, 22. And boom, all of a sudden you're up at 150 points. Like, none of these are like even outrageous. No one's broke 25 points other than Lamar. They all have just had a, a solid week at the same time, as well as your defense having a good game. It, um, it adds up quick, big, big time. Um, no points left on his bench at all, I don't believe. 13 points with Spears would have been a slight upgrade at flex. Um, Brock Purdy with 16 points wouldn't have been an upgrade over Lamar. A little bit of a concern that there are no more points on his bench, though. You still want to see your people on your bench scoring points. But Adams was questionable. Cup is out. Pitts, zero points. Watson, zero points. Um, you've, there's got to be some questions asked about whether maybe some of them need to be moved on. Uh, people like Cup, obviously, you know he's out. You kind of stashed him for later in the year. But Kyle Pitts is definitely a concern right now for a lot of fantasy managers. It's not just me who lost on the back end of that trade, though. Skip also was felled by Fraser. Both of them now sitting at 2-2. Two and two. Lots of 2-2s two and twos in this league. And wins are getting traded about all over the shop. So, CJ Stroud, his newly acquired quarterback, who I thought was having a really rough year and I couldn't trust anymore. 29 points. Um, Jonathan Taylor, 22 points. Najee Harris, his newly acquired running back, turned out to be an upgrade over James Cook, 11 points. Justin Jefferson, 15 points. This was the big knock for Skip. Rasheed Rice, zero points. Out hurt, didn't play. Um, but Travis Kelsey, who I cut not that long ago, finally comes back and shows that he's not maybe completely washed yet, as he records 9.95 a season high. Um, Brandon Ayuk scoring five points in the flex. Buckle with five. And the Bears defense with 15. Not really a whole lot left on the bench. Um... We could have done some upgrades here. Uh, obviously, Rasheed Rice could have brought Williams in for him. That's an 18-point turnaround that wins you the game. Um, being in Australia, I don't know what the time zones were like. He might have been fucked over by time zones. Um, McLaurin also would have been an upgrade over Ayuk at Flex. That seven points wouldn't have won in the game solely, though. But he definitely had the points on his bench to um, beat the score that he was given. Fraser. Two players not playing as they're still out. Still puts up a monster score. Kenneth Walker finally back from injury. 30 points. Insanity. Um, 20 from Mahomes, 0 from Mostert. 33 from Walker. Tyreek Hill fantasy managers look away. It's getting worse. 5.5 points. There is. It just goes showing no matter how good Tyreek Hill is, he can't make a quarterback throw the ball well. Um, really, really sad to watch Tyreek Hill just get wasted. Um, Nico Collins, 23.9 points. Incredible performance. 150 yards and a tubby. Got to be happy with that. Um, Evan Ingram, obviously, out. Drake London, 7 points. Youngway Koo, 22 points. 
sinking two PATs, two 40 plus field goals, and two 50 plus field goals. Craziness. And that Chargers defense coming in with 14 points in that very close loss to Kansas City. So, you also had his defense going up against the quarterback, which isn't ideal. But he did leave some points on the bench here. Swift and Hubbard would have been big, big upgrades. Straight up, like an extra 27 points there. Um, and then in here, he would have been up another 18. So what's that now? Four, he could have been up at 170 this week if he'd been a bit more um, organized. Oh, 190. He had foot fryer move as well. Craziness, the amount of points left on this bench. Someone needs to have a word with him because he is not... Um, not, 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 like, yeah, you've won the game, but you could have got 190 points this week. And finally, this week in the Andy Dalton fan club, we have Scott versus Tom in a massively high-scoring event. Almost 300 total points scored. Um, Scott did come out on top, though, 159, his best week of the season, I believe. Um, Jaden Hurts, 16 points. Zach Moss, 18 points. Corin Williams, 21 points. Jamal Chase, 18 points. Reed, 22 points. Kittle, 11 points. Alan Kamara, 23 points. Kicker, 14. Defense, 13. Everyone breaking 10 points. That is exactly how you win in fantasy football, ladies and gentlemen. But it almost wasn't enough. It almost wasn't enough because of Derrick Henry. Back, massive games for Derrick Henry. 199 rushing yards, a rushing touchdown, 10 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown. 46 points. Oh my good gravy. Um, he would probably count his lucky scores that Christian McCaffrey's out injured. Otherwise, this game could have been a lot, lot closer. Um, there's points probably left on the bench here as well. Let's have a little look here. Holy Christ. Um, Kyler Murray 10, you'd be a little bit disappointed with that. He could have got two more points out of Justin Herbert. Derek Henry, 47 points. Insanity. Mari Cooper, four points. Um, Malik Neighbors before he got hurt, 15 points. Ferguson, 5 points. ETN, 9 points. Brandon Aubrey, 12 points. 49ers defense, 36 points. That is vile. Um, let's see what else we got here. So, the big upgrades where he could have made some more points here is he could have made another 20 points off Addison. Um, because you would move ETN up to starting running back and Addison slots in here as your flex. So that's just straight up extra 20 points, which would have put him one point behind and then Herbert in for Kyler Murray would have made up the other two. This was a winnable game for Tom. Um, I assume with a score like 159, there was no points left on the bench. Uh, we got a 16 from Mike Evans. Would that have been an upgrade? It would not. Um, no backup quarterback. Yeah, so Scott did play his optimum lineup. Optimum lineup. There was no points left for Scott here, um, which means had Tom played his best team, he absolutely could have snuck this one out from underneath him, which is always crazy to think when he's got 160 points, that if things have gone a little differently, it would not have been enough. But that is it from this week in the Andy Dalton fan club. Lots of people 2-0, very much all to play for. We're getting to the point in the season now where teams are starting to settle. Um, I'm pretty happy with my roster now and how it's looking. Now I just need them to perform. Let's head over to the Gooley 12 League. And it is not like last week where it's all sad faces all round. We did pull off a win this week in the Gooley 12 League, taking my record to 2-2 two two over there when we played Luke, who was 2-1 and one at the time. Um... So we've pulled a little bit of a, um, a fast one here. It wasn't looking good for a long a long time then. Let's see what happened exactly. CJ Stroud is still starting for me in this league. Scored 23 points. Najee Harris, 10 points. Bijan, 11 points. Nico Collins, the absolute fire starter over here. 33 points. Uh, 150 yards and a tuddy. Really, really saved my bacon. Um... Wide receiver number two in Mike Sicky once again, doing me dirty. We're not going to talk about them. Tony Pollard, um, Monday Night Football, 18 points, got us over the line. Jake Moody and the Packers defense doing enough to keep us fighting here. Uh, we left some points on the bench, though. Yeah, Mike Evans and Pat, Pat, Pat Fryermuth were uh, relegated to the bench this week. And if we'd have played them, we could have unlocked another 20, 36 points, um, which would have had us far and away winning the game. 
Uh, what about Luke, though? Where did it all go wrong for Luke? Also got burnt by Rasheed Rice not playing against the Chargers. Um, if he'd have played a wide receiver, who's his next up wide receiver? Debo Samuel, 10 points. That would have won him the game. So very, very lucky here. Um, but Jared Goff last night, Monday Night Football, tried his best for Luke uh, with 27 points. Jones and Taylor, solid. Amon Ra, yeah. So he was down about 50 points um, going into Monday Night Football. And about 60 points going into Monday Night Football asking for Lockett, Taylor, and Goff to try and pull it off. And they got him close, in all fairness. Um, but I just wasn't to be. The Texans' defense really hurt him with only two points. If they could have been matching the Packers all of a sudden, it's it's a lot, lot closer, and it's just like one play difference. Um, Luke will still be pretty happy with his team. He just needs to hopefully make the right call next time. I don't think it was outrageous. If she Rice would have played, he probably would have got more than 10 points against the, the Chargers. Um, maybe a bit more on that. I can't remember exactly, though, if Debo had already played by the time that came in with the, with the Chiefs, the late window. Can't remember. Um, so it's, it's always a bit difficult to tell what to do in them situations. That is why injury reports are so important, folks. Next up, Josh versus Josh. And the league commissioner, Josh Locke, friend of the channel, has absolutely capitulated. He's on a losing streak of two. It's all gone completely wrong. Let's see where it's gone wrong in this 98 plays 94 affair. Jalen Hurts, Ky Kyron Williams, pretty solid start. Brees Hall, disappointing. Um, Godwin, solid. Shakir, solid. Kittle, solid. Singletree, little disappointing. McPherson, solid. Cowboys defense, little disappointing. But what went wrong? That's a very beatable score, only 98 points. Well, let's see. Dak Prescott won his matchup. Zach Moss, a little bit behind Kyron Williams, not a problem. Devon Achan, disappointing, but managed to beat Brees Hall. Tyreek Williams, not even 10 points. Really rough. He's f the first time since his rookie year he's gone three games without getting at least 50 receiving yards. Insanity. Um, or might be 50 total yards, actually, but still. Um, he won this one, though. Um, this, is the, this is the big swing right here, I think. Um, the tight end's 12 points difference right there. But Brian Robinson did try and fight back. 16 points swing in his favour there. You can see how this was such a close game. Um, in the end, you could argue that the difference maker was Evan McPherson. Then extra six points over Dicker, the kicker, um, won the game. If he scores the same as Dicker, Josh wins by two points. Um, Josh has got to try and remedy this age and Tyree kill situation until Tua is back to fitness um, because they're just not reliable at the minute. I mean, he's got other good running backs. So I think he just needs to... I think he needs to bench a -chan, um, move Robinson up as a starting running back, and then use that flex spot as it's intended as a flex. Um, maybe put Williams or Ridley in to start over Tyreek Hill. I think you can get away with starting Tyreek Hill still, um, but just don't expect Tyreek Hill numbers from him. Really rough to see. But there were points left on... The winner's bench, 29 there, 18 there, 21. He could have put this game away a lot easier. Another five points there. Another, what, 26 points there. So if everyone put out their best team, you could say Josh was lucky to come out even this close. Boom, boom, boom. Um, another high-scoring affair here when Mick met Cameron. Cam scoring 150 points um, to go to 2-2. Two and two. Meanwhile, Mick losing, dropping down to 2-2. Two two. Like I said, 2-2 two two is everywhere. Shows how crazy this season's been. Let's see where the points were at. Oh, here we go. Baker Mayfield, 28. Walker, 33. Rashad White, 10. Jefferson and Reed for 20 and 27. Hunter Henry, 3 points. How disappointing. <laughs> Drake London, 12. Fairben, 6. The Bears defense, 8. Everyone did their job. Um, you can accept... Sub five points from your tight end in the PPR league when everyone else has had such a great week. Um, Jane Daniels, 24 points. Still solid. Jameer Gibbs, 19 points. Still solid. 
Irving, 12 points, still solid. Dubes, 7.9, little low. Wilson, 7.1, little low. Zaka, 7 points, pretty good for a tight end. Diggs, 18 points, really good. Kicker, 8 points, defense, 9 points, you're very happy with that. It doesn't feel like a 36-point defeat. Like, you look at this team and the scores here, and you'd think that's going to win most games. Um, the only real difference you should be looking for is you'd, you'd be looking for your wide receiver core to still make, like, 20 points. I think the goal is always you want 20 points from your running backs, 20 points from your wide receivers at a minimum, and then two out of the four of them to, like, push past that and do pretty well. Um, but there's nothing left on his bench. And Joku hurt, Mostert hurt, Adams hurt, Chubb hurt. Gus Edwards not being used by the Chargers that much. Foreman not really used over at Cleveland. He needs to remedy this bench situation because right now, although this team isn't bad, bye weeks start soon. I believe this week's the first week of bye weeks. You miss players, he's going to get burnt. And meanwhile, Cam on his bench, much better. Um, Richardson obviously is look. You'll be a little bit worried about that if he's your backup quarterback. Nukuma's still on IR. That's fine. You sit on that. Having a backup kick is an interesting decision. Charbonnet took him out of the right time. Although ten points is still pretty good for the backup running back. Engram backup tight end hurt. Hopefully he'll be back soon. If not, you might need to move on from him. And then Hopkins and Cooper. You'd hope to not need too much and if you do put them in you hope they have their good week but good win from cam next up mr wagger man and tony met up uh wag got his ass beat fuck you wag you little bitch i don't even know if he watches these but yeah fuck him <laughs> he lost and we love seeing wag lose uh and tony's on a two win streak so he'll be very happy with that i'm sure kyla murray a weak performance uh montgomery mason pretty solid Myers, not too bad. Pickens, pretty good. Kincaid, um, at tight end, you take 10 points. Uh, Wondell Robinson and Flex did okay. Um, Brandon Aubrey, solid kick to have. Be a little bit upset he missed that 50-plus yarder, but he made one as well. Um, Chiefs defense, not too bad. Um, Sam Darnold on his bench, 20 points, would have been the difference maker if he'd have started him instead, but I don't think anyone else was an upgrade. Could have had two more points if he played the Vikings defense. But other than that, I think we're pretty um pretty locked in with the top roster there. But on the flip side, not a lot you could do. All Monday night football damage. Lamar Jackson, Derek Henry combining for 58 points on Monday night football to go, fuck you, Wag. This is my victory. Um Jalen Waddle's mansion 7.6 points without a quarterback is not too bad. Um Ferguson, 11 points to tight interrupts that you take. You'd be a little bit upset about your defence costing your points because you would be asking, why the fuck do I even bother with a defence? Um, but yeah, I don't really think there's any points left on the bench. Oh, actually, Jordan Love would have been an upgrade over Lamar Jackson. Extra five points there. Um, I don't think that would have been the smart play, though. Um, I would always, always, always start Lamar Jackson because that dude can do things that no one else in the league can do. Um, and that normally means points at the quarterback position. Yeah, uh, Tony will be ecstatic to be on a two-win streak after a 0-2 start, fighting up the leaderboard. And once again, love to see Wag lose. Fuck you, Wag. Now, George has been very, very active on the old trade market, trying to get deals over the line. He's clearly not happy with his team. And it's easy to see why when he's now 1-3. and three. This man wants to see change and he wants to see it now. Um, Ian, however, goes to 3-1. A little bit nervous he was after some of the injuries that came through, having taken CMC, but he's um, he's recovered and he's cracking on okay. Let's see what the players did, though. Um, Joe Burrow, 16. Connor, 18. Cook, 5. Debo, uh, not Debo, Ayuk, 7. Chase, 17. God at 13. A lot. The second half here is a lot better than the first. You see 5 and 6 out of your first four players and you're a little bit concerned, but he did his best to fight back with the score here. Um, you're going to be kicking yourself that you didn't start Addison over Ayuk. Um, in retrospect, and Worthy sitting on your bench is always going to hurt. But other than that, was there anything else you could really do? 
You could have played Hunt over Cook, but that would have been insane. Um, so yeah, there's not really a lot you could do here. <coughs> You've just got to hope that going forward, your players perform a bit better. Um, and you have less of these games and more of these games. Um, what did Ian do? 13 points from Mahomes, eesh. 22 from Truba Hubbard is huge. 12 from Teddy Spears, helpful. Deontay Johnson, 21 points, huge. Metcalf, 15, huge. Travis Kelsey, 16, huge. Keenan Allen, 5 points. When everyone else has already done that, that's okay, you flex. 5 points from Yuki Chris isn't too bad. And that 49ers defense with 22 points is insanity. Um, so very, very happy with that. Um, was there more points for Ian here? Um, could have had 13 more points at kicker. Um, which is an insane thing to say. He could have had Kirk in for Metcalf for an extra four. So he could have had an extra 20-odd points. Um, but when you've already won by 20, I think you're going to kind of be okay with that. But yeah, not too bad. Ian's making it work. But relying on Tuba Hubbard and Deontay Johnson to get your wins is kind of scary when very quickly they could both back, go back to scoring five points a game. Um, if this Panthers team crumbles. So we'll see how he handles that. And to wrap it all up, we had Oscar versus Joss. And Oscar falls to one and three. Ooh, not very good. Not very good. Very close scoring game, though. 97 plays 102. So let's see what we've got in here. Josh Allen, seven points. That's burnt a lot of people this week. I am certain of it. Um, Kamara, 25 points. Oh, that's tasty. Williams, 10 points. Touch low, but you can live with it. Higgins, 12 points. Not bad. Lamb, 23 points. Very nice. Laporta, 9.3. Very nice. Zay Flowers, 2 points. Burns. Tyler Bass, 6 points. Not too bad. Steelers defense, only 2 points. Hurts a bit. Um, Points left on the bench, yes. A 23 and a 17 at a wide receiver and running back. Could have had an extra 13 points, extra 15 points. Um, so definitely enough points to win this match up here. And I'm sure we'll be quite upset with how that ended up going, especially when it was really so close. Um, would I have... Pittman's had a slow start. Brown for the Bengals might have been a good play. But over Williams... Maybe not. I definitely would have been considering Pittman or Brown over Zay Flowers. I'll say that much for sure. Um, and either of them would have been enough to win him the game. So maybe it was a mistake. Not just unfortunate. Mm. Let me know what you think down below. Um, and then on the flip side, on the winning team, Brock Purdy, 14 points. Not great, but outdid Josh Allen this week. Saquon Barkley. First slow week for Saquon Barkley, I'd imagine 13 points. Josh Jacobs, 11 points. Malik Neighbors, 23. Marvin Harrison, 15. Kyle Pitts, none. That has to sting. Um, DJ Moore, 11 points. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the ones where you look at it, you want your quarterback to be pushing 20, and you want your tight end to be pushing 5. That would have been an extra 10 points, and then all of a sudden you've got a fair bit of breathing room there. But when it's that close, you are kind of looking at your tight end going, will you please do something? Um, especially when you've got Isaiah Likely on the bench scoring three points. He could have had Shahid in for DJ Moore for an extra four points, and of course Fields in for Purdy for another 17 points. So he could have been scoring 140 this week pretty easily um, without too many changes here. But there we go. That is your wins and your losses from my two leagues this week in fantasy. Let me know how you're getting on in your league down below, and I'll see you next time. Peace.